My name is Robert Ping. I'm going to turn it over to our two presenters rather quickly uh, because we only have 30 minutes today for the webinar. So Catherine and Sarah, feel free to take it away. There. So thank you so much for joining today's Lunch and Learn. Um, we're going to be talking about data resolution workflow, um, which is a really uh, wonderful data quality feature in REDCap. And um, I feel like it's pretty underutilized, but I did find out that Sarah Roth, who's joining me today and is from Regan Street, um, has a lot of experience with it. So um, she has graciously um, agreed to present about her experiences with it. So we're going to go ahead and, and get started. Um, again, my name is Catherine Bauer Martinez, and I'm the REDCap administrator. I work with research technologies as part of UITS, and I'm joined today by Sarah Roth. And um, Sarah is a research coordinator three at the Regan Street Institute, and um, which is part she's her center is Center for Health Services Research, and she'll be uh, presenting um, in just a few minutes. So, say, thank you very much, Sarah, for joining. Yep. Um, thank you. Yeah, great, great. Um, so just as as I normally do with uh, these kind of sessions, um, this will not cover everything. 30 minutes is a little bit of a short amount of time, but what we hope to do is to give you a chance to kind of see where it is and see how it works and maybe see if it would be something you'd be interested for your type of project. So uh, we will have some resources. You can also reach out to support. You can schedule a consult with the IU REDCap team. Our email is redcap at iu.edu. And so today's agenda uh, will follow in this order. The first part is the introduction, which I am doing now. Um, Sarah will, will, will pick up after, um, I'll just say, what is the data resolution workflow? Then Sarah's going to join in talking about configuring the data resolution workflow and uh, doing a demo and questions. Questions are um, allowed throughout. Um, if for the, in the essence of time, we might bundle some together. Um, I'll be checking the queue to see if anybody has any questions. Um, and uh, relaying those to Sarah if she's speaking at the time. So let's go ahead and get started. So what is, um, so the introduction, thanks for coming for the people that are just joining. Uh, this is January Lunch and Learn. It's a 30 minute webinar about the data resolution workflow, which is a, one of the features in REDCap that allows users to open a workflow for documenting the process of resolving issues with data. Um, it is one of the data quality measures uh, that you can use, the data resolution workflow. If you are using the field comment log already, you can't have the field comment log and the data resolution workflow at the same time. But it is a great resource if you're looking for uh, talking about looking at opening, responding to, and closing data queries. And Sarah's going to talk more in depth about uh, why she decided to use it and how, how it works in, in REDCap. So go ahead and take it away, Sarah. Thank you so much. Thank you, Catherine. Um, so I work on a variety of projects and I'm gonna share one of them with you today that happens to be a good case use for this tool. Uh, the project that I'm gonna be talking about uses a lot of different people that are on the team. We work with community health workers who are our key data entry folks. And uh, we have a rather large team looking at reducing infant mortality in Indiana. I mentioned that there's a lot of people on the team because that means everybody sort of has a different way of working and different sets of things that they prioritize. And community health workers, what they really are passionate about is working with their clients and helping them get connected to resources. They are not passionate about data entry and data quality, um, which is where this comes into play. Um, I also like to point out what types of things the data resolution workflow is good for, um, because if you tried to do this with every variable in your in your project, you would quickly get overwhelmed. Um, my project has something like 600 val variables and around 500 records. So um, what I do is to pick on the things that are really, really important to the outcomes of our project. So as I mentioned, it's infant mortality. So we really, really care about things like baby's birth date and weight. And if a woman is pregnant, what is her due date? Those are the things that we absolutely cannot go without in our project. So those are the things that I zero in on when using this tool. The other thing that I look at is things that are easy to get wrong um, and dates are a big one. 
uh, when you're entering someone's birth date, for example, it's really easy to enter the correct date or month and day, but the wrong year. Um, also, when you're doing today's date, if you're not using the today button or if you're entering the date of an encounter, it's easy to write the correct day and month, but last year, you know, this time of year when we're all still saying 2022. Go ahead to the next slide, please. So when I go, when I switch over to the demo here, I'm going to show you how to turn this tool on and set it up. Um, I'm going to show you what to consider with user rights, um, because different people on your team are going to be using this tool in different ways. And then I'm going to show you how I use the tool um, using the data quality rules and resolve issues features. Next slide, I think, except next slide may be the demo. So I'll ask permission to share my screen. Okay, the other thing that I always uh, try to remember to point out is this is a tester project. This is a replica of the real project that I described to you. Everything in this particular project is fictional data. And I use this for training purposes. Every time I onboard a new person on my team, I get them access to this tester, which is a pretty close copy of the real project. And I ask them to enter fake data and get used to how it all works. Um, so I have plenty of data in here, it's all fake. Um, so the first thing I want to show you on the project setup page, scroll down a little bit to where it says optional, optional modules and customizations, and we're going to click this additional button here. We're going to scroll down a little bit to where it says enable the field comment log or data resolution workflow. The field comment log is default. So if you're interested in the data resolution workflow, you're going to want to make sure that's checked, and then you'll switch this drop down to data resolution workflow. Um, I also like to point out that um, there is a little instructional video that's available right here if you want to check that out at a later time. Um, so that's how you turn it on. The very first thing, that's what you start with. And the next thing I want to make sure to point out is the user rights. So on my team, I've got community health workers who are doing the, the bulk of the data entry. And then I have myself and a couple other people on the management team that really do the data management and the analysis and all of those pieces. And so we interact in different ways. Um, as I said, the community health workers, they want to work with their clients and they want the data entry to be as easy and as simple as possible. Quality is not the thing that they're most interested in, but as a management team, we do, um, do want to make sure our data is correct and complete. So I have a, my project set up with roles and in my coach role, my community health worker role. Here on the left side are all the privileges that they have. And when you scroll down to about here in the data resolution workflow, I want my community health workers or my research assistants to only be able to respond to open queries. Whereas I myself and other people on my management team are the ones that are going to open those queries and close them. So for my community health workers, I click respond only. And then for for people on my management team, I have open, close, and respond to queries. So just keep in mind the roles on your team, the different ways people interact with your projects and what you want them to do, because they're going to have different ways of interacting with this tool and you want to set that up appropriately in user rights. So now that that's all set up, I'd like to show you how to use it. So I'm going to pick a random record and a random form. I'll pick one that's incomplete. And for any, um, for any field in, in REDCap, you have this history icon 
where you can see when and what data was entered. Um, and then you have this little thought bubble here. Um, this is where you can open a data query. So in this particular one is blank, and I'd like to open a query uh, to tell my user, hey, please, please fill in this blank. And so I would select them from the dropdown. I'll pretend that I'm picking on Dawn today. And then you have to put something here in the comment box. Um, and you open that query. So again, you can do this on any variable in any form in REDCap. Um, and once I've done that, now this bubble has a red exclamation point on it. And so I can click on that and open it up and see that I have asked Dawn to, um, to fill in that missing blank. And then um, what Dawn would do is come over here to where it says resolve issues. And um, you can see here that I have this query that I opened today and um, I would like for Dawn to address that. So she can then click on this little comment box and that it would open up the same thing. And what I like about this feature here is this link up here where it says record ID, that is a link to the very exact place the exact form, the exact variable where that query is. And so it will take her directly there. So she can then, um, she can then, um, you know, enter the information that she needs, save the form. And then she can go back to this query and she'll respond to it. I'm gonna point out that this is my view. So I have this option to close the query because it's it's me that's accessing it. But Dawn as my community health worker won't have the option to close. She'll only have the option to reply. So she's gonna choose the response from the dropdown, something like data missing or corrected. And then she does have to type something in the box but it doesn't, it can be anything. So usually I just tell them to put done or fixed or, you know, something indicating that they have taken care of that query. So then they respond. And here on that um, resolve issues page again, this very first line, you see where I put the initial question, please fill this in, and where myself pretending to be Dawn wrote done. And then I can open it up and I see both those comments. I also see the history of she actually or I actually did put in that information. So now that I can see this field is no longer blank, I can close the query. I'm satisfied with it. So again, you have to type something there. I usually just put thanks or resolved or closed or something like that. Once I do that, it disappears. So when I'm training my team, I always point out that um, once they've responded to a query, it shows the most recent response as well as the additional one, but it does not go away. It stays there until a member of the management team closes it. So I just let them know that to not panic. They did do it correctly if they you know, entered their information. It just has that extra step that requires me as a data manager to go in and resolve and actually close that query. So that's kind of the basics of how it works. You can open a query from any um, variable in REDCap, and then the person you assign it to can correct it. Um, they can come to this resolve issues page, open it up, follow the link directly to the exact place where that question is, um, correct the data as needed, and then respond to the query. The other thing I wanna show you is this data quality page um, and it's set up with a variety of rules that um, REDCap does automatically. So you could look for blank values. You, you could look for things um, that are incorrect calculated fields. 
Um, and all of these are helpful for different things. Um, I usually don't do blank values. And the reason for that is, as I said, this project has 600 variables across 5,000 records. So if I tried to search for every blank variable in this project, it would shut down my computer because there's tens of thousands of them. So um, what I do instead is to focus on those key outcomes that I'm really interested in for my project. So some examples I have here, um, if they're pregnant and their due date is missing, that is something I really, really care about, um, as is race. And I mentioned before, these things that are easy to get wrong, like birth dates, um, those are things that I use these data quality rules for as well. Um, so using this little add feature here, you give it a name, and then you use logic, um, very similar to how you would um, branching logic, uh, you know, to, to identify what are the things that you're looking for. And there are, um, I think, some training videos within REDCap that show you how to do these things as well. So I'm not going to go into that right now. But once you have these rules, you can then click these little execute buttons to look for how many records um, meet those rules. So in this example, I'm looking for the person is pregnant and their due date is missing. That's what this logic piece says here. And it turns out that there are six records that meet that criteria. So um, I can open up and look at them. And you can see one of them here, I already opened a query on and there's a little comment box right there. Um, but I'm gonna choose another one of these. Um, and if I right click on this, uh, it is a link that takes me directly to that place. I could, oops, I don't need that record anymore. I could uh, open up a data query from right here, um, but I, when I do it this way, it does not create that link. So I don't like to do it that way. Instead, my practice is to always go to the exact field that I'm looking at and put my query there. So I'll open this up. I'll open a data query. I will assign it to Isabel this time. Um, no, I'm gonna make sure it goes to Allie. And I forgot to point this out before, you have the option to check these boxes if you would like the user you're assigning it to to get an automatic email, letting them know that they have a query that they wanna address. So um, that just depends on your team and how they like to work, whether they like to use the messenger or if they prefer email. Um, but it's a really nice feature that they get a notice that they have a query to resolve rather than having to just remember to check every time. So I'm going to do this again, please. Please fill in the due date because this is a really important thing to this project. Um, I don't actually want to email Allie right now um, because this is a tester project, but I could just by checking that box and open the query. And then you can see the little uh, exclamation point there. And it also will show up on my resolve issues page. There it is, it's at the bottom. Um, I think this organ by DAG. So that's why this one didn't show up at the top. It's down here. I think that is everything that I had in mind to show about the data resolution workflow. I'm happy to answer any questions because I know we went through that pretty fast. So we do have a question from Lori. Um, do the reminder emails also include the query comments so far? They do not. So the emails, um, the the glorious thing about REDCap is that it's very, very secure um, and not distributing PHI or information that shouldn't otherwise get outside of REDCap. So I think it just says you have a data query to resolve and it might specify which project. Um, so if you're on various projects, it'll tell you, you know, you've got one in WeCare Tester, please go check it out. But it won't tell you 
um, the information about the query until you sign into REDCap and come here to look at it. And that's a security feature. Um, so Sarah, um, what is uh, one of the most challenging things when people are learning about the data resolution workflow in your experience? Um, I think they're intimidated by it. And I think there's a mentality where, especially when you have different roles on your team, I have community health workers and I have this management team, um, they tend to think that they're in trouble for having gotten something wrong. And I get the nasty nickname of the data police, which I fight and fight and fight against. Um, and so just kind of challenging that mindset of no, 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 you're not in trouble. You're great at what you do, but data is important. And so, so what I do in my role is to look at, look out for these things that are easy to get wrong or easy to miss so that I can help you in your role to focus on these things and get them done so that you're not you're not having to worry about data quality all the time. That's my job. I look for these things. I catch them when I come then when they come up. I check with you about it. Say, hey, please fill in this missing data or this birth date looks wrong. Um, and then you as a community health worker go about your day caring for the people that you're working with. Um, I try to, I know that they hate data entry. And so I try to see my role as doing everything I can to make their role as easy as possible when it comes to data. So that mindset, I think, is the most challenging thing. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, just teaching them to look for those queries and resolve them it takes a little bit of practice, which is why I have this tester project to do exactly that. Um, also, it used to be that that little checkbox to send them an email or a, a, a red cap messenger message, that's relatively new. And it used to be that we just had to tell them, hey, at least once a week, go in and check if you have any queries. And that's a really easy thing for them to forget. So then we would have, then we would have to check and, you know, circle back and say, hey, you've got three queries that you haven't responded to. Right. This makes it a lot easier because then you can give them that instant notice. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. Does anybody else have questions uh, for Sarah or for me? Um, oh, so here's another one. And we've got a good one. Um, does the little bubble go away after the quick clear query is closed? Great question. The answer is no, um, but it turns from red to green. Um, so let me see if I can find one to show you. So here on this resolve issues page, there's all these filters that you can use. Another thing that I neglected neglected to mention, because of my role on this project, I'm able to see them all, but my community health workers, since they're assigned to a data access group, they will only see their own queries, but I'm able to see them all. I'm also able to look at ones that have already been resolved. And so I'm gonna open one of those up and you can see this one has a green check mark and that means it's been resolved. So we can open this up and look at it. Um, I initially asked Dawn to check on the race of the baby. Um, and then all of these are me, but we're pretending that I'm, I'm multiple people here. Um, then that race was filled in and responded to the query that it was fixed. And then I came in and closed the query and it turned green. And if I were to um, open this in the data form itself, it would again take me directly to that spot. And you can see there's still this bubble here, but now it's got a green check mark instead of a red exclamation point. And Catherine, thank you for reading the questions. I can't see the chat right now. So I appreciate you reading this to me. Yeah, well, it's good for a couple purposes. Um, for the recording too, for people, they can't see it. So try to read the questions. Um, if you have any questions, be, go ahead and put them in the chat window um, and we can answer them. Um, so far, some great questions. Um, I think, um, you know, what I've learned about this, I haven't used it in the field, but I've learned a lot of the little tricks that um, Sarah has shared, and it just really makes it efficient. There's just so much you can do and really 
um, big bang for your buck. I guess that would be a good value. So that's one of the things I've learned is like all the ways she can go and go right into the record and you don't have to click multiple times to get there. So I do really, uh, I really did appreciate her seeing, um, you know, the way she's used it in a project. And, and obviously she's uh, refined it over the years. So she's got some very smart um, shortcuts. I think it's also really helpful when you think about it from a kind of accountability standpoint, because REDCap tracks everything that happens in REDCap. You're able to track on any given field all the data changes that have been made and when, which you can do with the history. But this tells you not only what changes happened and when, it also tells you why. You know, there was a missing variable or the date didn't look right or something didn't compute. And then there was this conversation, hey, can you double check this? Yes, I double checked it and here's the correct answer. And then it's kind of verified. So if you ever need to, you know, account for why did this data change, you can say exactly why, because it tracks that kind of conversation history that goes along with it. So we have a comment from Lori. Um, thanks for this lovely overview. I thank her, meaning your Sarah, of uh, advice that this is a great tool for large distributed data. Um, I'm missing a little part here. I can't read. Uh, something, I'm sorry, the little hack thing is there. Crew sounds useful. Sorry, uh, entry, data entry <laughs> crew sounds useful. So it covered up the entry part. So um, great tool for large distributed data entry crew sounds useful. Uh, so if anybody else has any other questions, um, we're nearing the end of our time, but we do wanna, we do have a few minutes for some questions or anything that you didn't understand, uh, just stay on the line and you, we can go ahead and answer those questions. Um, either you can speak up or you can use the chat, whatever works for you. I'm going to turn off my stop share, but well, sure. I can always yeah. turn it on if needed. Yeah. This helps so, me see who's on the call and then I can actually read the chat. Yeah, yeah no problem. So uh, thank you uh, for, to everybody that came. Um, I'm going to just quickly jump right back in here with some of the resources we have. REDCap, um, our support line. Um, office hours on Wednesdays. We have IUKB, which is our knowledge base for general information about REDCap training videos, uh, more training videos. This video will be made into a training video as well. We have all of our lunch and learns, so be sure to check those out if you have any questions. And thanks again for joining us and taking time out of your busy day to um, join the January Lunch and Learn. And I especially want to thank Sarah Roth today for graciously um, giving her time and effort to share with everybody in the Red Cap, IU REDCap community. So thank you very much. Yeah, start on that up page. Um, down it says enable optional modules and then additional customizations. And it's like the third or fourth one down here. Enable the field comment log or data resolution workflow. And uh, field comment log is always the default. So when you check this, you'll want to change the drop down so that it says data resolution workflow instead. Um, and then you can also access this training video here if you would like another demonstration of how to how to do that. And then just in case you um, missed it, the other thing you have to do is set up set it up in user rights so that um, depending on, in my example, if you're a data entry coach versus a data manager, those people are going to have different ways that they enact with the tool. So under user rights, I'm just going to pick the first uh, person at the top of my list. And here on the left, down here, it says data resolution workflow, and you can choose any of these options. For myself and my data management team, I want us to be able to open, close, and respond to queries. For my coaches who are just working to enter the data, I just ask them to be able to respond to the opened queries. So you want to set those up uh, in your user rights, either for every person or for every role. So I have a coach role, I have a data manager role, um, and I set those up accordingly. Okay, we have a question here. Oops. 
Um, can you can you read it or I'll read it for yeah. you? I'll, they can hear it. So can you enable this this once the project is active data collection, or must you set this up when you develop the red cap form? I think you can set it up at any time. Um, I don't think I would turn it off once I've turned it on. Um, I've never, act, okay, the real answer is I've never tried, but I think you can turn it on um, after you've already started data collection. Yeah, if you do That's run a great into, question. Yeah, it is a good question. If you do run into a problem, if you're trying to start it um, after you've already started data collection and you're in production mode, uh, reach out to us. We may be able to implement it, um, but I but I believe you can do it yourself. But you know, if you can't, reach out and we'll see if we can do it on our end. If you want to add it to an existing project, so it's uh, one o'clock. So thanks again, and um, we really appreciate everybody joining today. Thanks again, Sarah. Thank you, Robert, and um, have a great rest of your week.